this. One of the ways I understand what God wants, um, you know, is, is what I tell people and have told people through the years, just like hospice folks tell people. Um, when, when you have a loved one that's dying, you know, and some of you, some of us have been in that situation. And I always tell the family, that the, 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 you know, the, the sons and the daughters and the grandkids and all that. Because people want to say, you know, their loved one's dying, which is a good thing. They're in the room with them. And, and I always remind the family, I say, remember. They say that the ears and the hearing and the, some of the processing is the last thing. You know, it may seem like they're in a coma or that they're out of it. You know, they're just hours, days away from dying. But think about this. <laughs> What do you think they, your loved one, in their final days and hours, what do you think they want to hear? I always tell the family, when you come in here and gather, stop crying. Stop being sad. Tell jokes. Tell funny stories. Talk about the things and do the kind of things that when, when mom or dad or grandma and grandma, you know when all the kids and the family would gather, what did you guys do? Whether it was Christmas or Thanksgiving or a weekend, or, what's everybody do? You got families, right? What do you do? You laugh, you joke, you tease, you tell stories. I always tell families, do that. Do that because your loved one, that's what they want to hear. They want to hear you being joyful. What do you think? Do you agree with that? Yes? Keep that in mind. That's how I understand God. And how God likes to see us laugh, folks. And, and understand, not laughing at, at, at other people's misfortune, not laughing um, cruel laughter, not making fun of laughter, not that. And many of us are good at that kind of stuff. That's not all, what I'm talking about today and never will. That God finds pleasure. Can you believe that? You can't, can't you? God finds great pleasure in seeing His children laugh. God says, I've given you a spirit of laughter, a spirit of joy. And we know that God laughed. Psalm 59. God has given us this gift to laugh. And we, we fold it into this idea because it fits that, that, that Jesus came and said, I have come to give you life and that more abundantly. Jesus said, I have come so that you can live this life fully and so that when you die from this life, you'll keep on living. Jesus said, I have come to give you life and part of life Part of being healthy, part of thriving, is this idea of laughter. Now, understand, it's not the only thing. Laughter is not the only thing that restores us, that, 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 that rejuvenates us, that it's, that it's part of thriving. It's not the only thing, but it's an important thing. It is an important part of a healthy mind and a healthy body and a healthy spirit. And again, that's what we're talking about during Lent. That's why we have this, the preschool kids here planted grass seed, and every week we're going to watch the grass grow up. I know these stands are kind of in the way right now, but they're going to be here with us. Thrive. That idea of that's God's intention, that we thrive. You know, during Lent, our, 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 our focus is moving closer to God, moving to thrive. And, and we're getting there by changing our habits and changing our practices. You know, <clears throat> Started out by talking about how important it is to change our mind and to change the kinds of things we fill our mind with, the kind of things we watch on television, the kinds of movies we watch, the kind of things we read, the kind of things we look at on the internet. And we addressed that several weeks ago and said, look, to thrive, to be healthy, you've got to pay attention to what you're putting in your brain. Last week, talked about that subject that the church has seeded the ground on for so many years, and that's healthy eating and exercise. And paying attention to what we do with these bodies that we have on loan from God. That God gave these to us. We don't own them. They're from God, our bodies. And God's intention is that we take care of them so we can live a long life. That we can be healthy and love God and love others and serve the world. Amen? You still with me? Mm -hmm. Amen. So we're talking about healthy mind, healthy body. And it seemed natural to talk about a healthy spirit today. That's our focus. So far, we focused on healthy mind, healthy spirit. Talked about the 30-30. The challenge is for you to do it, not just show up on Sunday morning for an hour and kind of halfway pay attention to what the preacher says. The challenge is for you to get serious. No more buts. I played that funny video for a reason. It wasn't just to entertain you. It was to try and get a message across that all of us, all of us are great with our excuses of why we can't have healthy minds, healthy bodies, and healthy spirits, but we need to stop it and get serious about it. That's why we're doing 30-30. So healthy mind, healthy body, healthy spirit, so we can thrive. And laughter, laughter impacts this. Laughter, and not being afraid to laugh, even in church. Can you believe that? 
This is important. And as the church, we've got to talk about this. I have to talk about this and say laughter is healthy. Laughter will help lead us to thriving. Now, over 40 years ago, a man named Norman Cousins wrote this book. How many of you have ever heard of this book? Anatomy of an Illness. You ever seen this? It's a true story. It's amazing. It's amazing. Lo, have you read it, actually? You've probably read it. Pretty cool book, isn't it? The short version, Norman Cousins was uh, diagnosed with, a, with a, a disease, with a sickness, and he was in the hospital, and he just wasn't getting better, just wasn't getting better. And so he got out of the hospital, and he went to a hotel, okay? He went to a comfortable hotel, and he had his friends bring him uh, better food to eat than what they serve in the hospital. I don't need to put hospital food down, because actually I kind of like it, but he did This was like in the 70s. And so he went to the hospital, he was more comfortable, he got better food, and... He had his friends and family come and tell him jokes and, and watch movies so that he could laugh. So he could laugh for about 30 minutes a day. And what he found is, after laughing for at least 30 minutes a day, I mean laughing, just laughing, he could sleep pain-free. And so the combination of mind, body, spirit, along with this dose of laughter, healed Norman Cousins. It healed him. It all worked together, and that's the book. It's called Anatomy of an Illness. And one of the powerful lessons learned from that is that connection. It's no secret, no accident, no coincidence that God created us as these connected beings, mind, body, spirit, and laughter. Laughter and the effect of laughter on our spirit and on our mind and on the body was proven by Norman Cousins. You all with me so far? Still. Pretty powerful. We need to laugh. We need to laugh not just because it sounds cool to say. We need to laugh. We need to laugh because it's part of God's plan. Make no mistake about that. We need to lighten up and laugh. And literally, I pulled some notes from the internet and I pulled it all together, so I'm not going to give you some quotes on this or some uh, uh, references. But basically what I found, and I'm going to read this. Why do we need to laugh? You know, God is amazing. God put it all together. God put it all together and laughter makes a difference with our mind, our body, and our spirit. They have found, they being science and research and the medical people, have found that laughter relaxes the whole body. Laughter, a good hearted laugh, relieves physical tension and stress, leaving your muscles relaxed for up to 45 minutes. Isn't that amazing? You gotta laugh. Laughter boosts the immune system because laughter decreases stress hormones and increases immune cells and the infection-fighting antibodies, thus improving your resistance to disease. How many of you knew that? 